Here are the best games on the App Store from the first half of 2022. Number 10, we have Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion. In this 2D action game, you play as a turnip who failed to pay taxes and has been evicted from home. Now he is wanted for a crazy $1 reward. Players must go on a quest to pay back your debt. Do this by solving puzzles, dealing with different foes, and grow and harvest plants to aid you. Don't forget to rip up your tax documents to erase your paper trail and potentially destroy the government. The game offers a free demo, which is great to let players try out the first section of the game to see if they want to purchase the full game later on. It's available on iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, and Mac. I definitely had the most fun playing this one on my Apple TV. With 60 FPS and the quirky sound design and indie action gameplay, it really just all shines on the big screen. It's also quite nice on iPad Pro with 120 FPS support available. Number nine is Dismantle. Dismantle is a fantastic open world zombie survival game. The 3D graphics are nothing special, but it's one of the best games in this genre that I've ever seen on the App Store. You ascend from shelter after years to brave the new world infested by the undead. The goal is to try and escape. You'll quickly find this is no easy task and involves completing a bunch of quests, fighting different zombie types, upgrading and unlocking new gear, building outposts and exploring the huge map. The game does have some performance issues if you run it at max graphics and 60 FPS, so just be careful there. Dismantle costs $9.99 USD. It is available on iPhone, iPad, and Apple Silicon based Macs. Number eight, we have Streets of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4 takes forward the Streets of Rage legacy in this retro beat em up with hand drawn, comic inspired graphics and updated mechanics. I still can't believe this one came to the App Store. It took me by surprise, but it makes sense to be here. Fighting games, if implemented correctly, can work quite well on touchscreen, and Streets of Rage 4 is no exception. The touch buttons are very easy for moving and combining different attacks and specials. Or you can play with a controller, yippee! The major downside to this port is no online co-op multiplayer. Boo! This is one of the best modes on the console and PC version and should really be here. Streets of Rage 4 costs $8.99 USD. It is available on iPhone and iPad only. Number 7 is Gunfire Reborn. It's not often these days that we get a premium paid FPS game on the App Store. Gunfire Reborn mixes in different elements from various games, Doom, Borderlands, Dead Cells and Hades, to create a fantastic roguelike plus FPS adventure. You can control different heroes, all with unique abilities. As you explore stages, use randomly dropped weapons to fight back the opposing force. The game supports solo and online multiplayer with up to four players, which is excellent. This game, like similar to Borderlands, is so fun to play with some buddies. It does have controller support, which is great, but keep in mind it's partial. It doesn't work for all menu interaction. Gunfire Reborn costs $6 99 USD. It is available on iPhone, iPad, and Apple Silicon based Macs. Number six, we have Hot Lap League. I'm surprised not many people are talking about this hot new arcade racer. Hot Lap League is similar to the Track Mania series in that you can race on extreme tracks, requiring unique techniques and strategies to reach the end. It's fairly easy 
in the first chapter, it's quite easy. But once you reach the medium stages and above, you'll find it's harder to beat the opposing ghost opponent. There is no multiplayer here, only solo campaign and daily event modes. It's just you on the track alone, trying to reach metal times and stay ahead of the ghost car. I strongly suggest enabling 60 FPS or 120 FPS from the game settings menu if you're on an iPhone 13 Pro or iPad Pro for the most thrilling racing experience possible here. Hot Lap League costs $7.99 USD. It is available on iPhone and iPad only. Number five is El Ejo. El Ejo is a spaghetti western adventure game by Handy Games. You must help a six-year-old boy to find his mother. What's cool about this one is that it has no violence. Instead, it revolves around stealth to avoid all the bad people and obstacles. You can use the shadows to hide, solve environmental puzzles, use different tactical toys to move around foes, and on your journey, you can inspire other children to join you on the path to freedom. The touch controls work very great, as the on-screen buttons are well placed, or you can play with a controller. Quick note, enabling ultra graphics from the in-game settings menu also plays the game at 60 FPS or 120 FPS on iPad Pro, while balanced locks the FPS to 30 and 60 FPS on iPad Pro. El Ejo costs $9.99 USD. It is available on iPhone, iPad and Apple TV. Number 4 we have Warped Kart Races. Warped Kart Races is a good new alternative to Mario Kart Tour on the App Store. Being on Apple Arcade may be annoying for some, I get that, but at least it has no ads or in-app purchases. Another great aspect of this game is that it has full controller support. Yippee! There are 20 characters to players from classic shows such as American Dad, Family Guy, King of the Hill, and Solar Opposites. Different single player modes are available too, from Rookie, Pro, Expert and Free Play. For multiplayer, you can play in race, battle and tournament modes. It's a massive shame though, that there is no local or split screen multiplayer, which is kind of a big deal for these type of games. Hopefully this can be added in a future update, please. Warped Kart Races is available on everything, iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, and Mac. Number three is Into the Breach. So technically, Into the Breach came to the App Store in July 2022, which is past the first half of 2022, which is what this list is looking at, but I wanted to make one exception to the list with this absolutely outstanding strategy game. All of us have been asking for this game to come to mobile since it was released. The only downside to playing this game on mobile is that it requires a Netflix subscription. Still, it makes perfect sense to be on touchscreen. Defending your cities from aliens using the top-down 2D perspective and having turn-based battles works really well with the touchscreen or touch UI or touch buttons, I don't know. It's an incredibly deep tactical experience too. You'll come to find it has a great atmosphere, exciting game loop, a fun variety of units and enemies to try out, and frequently changing choices to make. Subset games have even added new advanced weapons, mechs, pilots, enemies, missions, and more. It is available on iPhone and iPad only. Number two, we have Apex Legends Mobile. Apex Legends Mobile was one of the most anticipated free mobile games this year, taking most of the experience from the PC and console version and brilliantly translating it for touchscreen and a smaller display. Go into iconic modes from Battle Royale, Ranked Match, Practice, 
TDM, gun game, and hack. It's not as graphically advanced as it really could be, but having 60 FPS support is great, and up to 80 FPS on iPhone 13 Pro is awesome. I'm hoping in the future Respawn can bring 120 FPS support to iPad Pro. The game also has controller support now for gameplay only, which is great to see, especially if you have a controller mount or an iPad on a stand. Apex Legends Mobile is available on iPhone and iPad only. Number one, we have Total War Medieval 2. You can trust Feral Interactive for bringing another great AAA strategy game to mobile. With a compelling mix of massive real-time battles and sophisticated turn-based strategy, this is the complete Total War desktop classic brought to iOS without compromise in terms of visuals and performance for 60 FPS on the latest devices. The only thing missing is multiplayer. Still, you have a, a big game here on offer, even with that multiplayer. You have 17 playable factions that vie for supremacy across three continents throughout the turbulent Middle Ages. The game uses a new and refined user interface and intuitive touch controls to make it as comfortable as possible here. Or if you're playing an iPad, you can play with a mouse and keyboard. Awesome, thanks Feral. Total War Medieval 2 costs $14.99 USD. It is available on iPhone and iPad only. Here are some bonus new App Store games. Dragon Quest Builders has you exploring a world made of blocks. Players can gather, craft and build with the end goal of defeating the evil Dragon Lord. As you travel around, you'll face off against vicious foes from slimes, golems, dragons, and more. Watcher Chronicles is a terrific 2D Souls-like ARPG with 14 plus hours of gameplay. You can play the first area for free. Diablo Immortal finally landed on the App Store. Don't get me wrong, it's fun and a good translation of Diablo for mobile, but I need to play more of this one before I can fully recommend it based on its uh, mixed free-to-play model. Neoverse The Trinity is a time-warping multiverse adventure game combining roguelite, deck building and strategy gameplay all in one. It offers a free demo, allowing players to try out certain elements of the game before buying other elements. I don't know how else to explain it. T3 Arena is a free-to-play 3v3 hero shooter featuring modes from Crystal Assault, Team Deathmatch, Free For All, Control, and Payload. The game also has controller support for gameplay, which is something you don't often see for free third-person shooter games on mobile. So, what do you think of these new App Store games from the first half of 2022. In my opinion, we're getting some really high quality indie games from PC and console at the moment, and heaps more are coming later in the year. It's very exciting for me, and it's showing that mobile gaming is going back in the right direction to premium mobile games, instead of all this annoying free to play blah, 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 stuff that we've been seeing for the past a long time. Anyway, leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date with new App Store game releases. My name is Stewie and thanks for watching.